Um, well, great. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll get started here so that we can stay on time. Hopefully, we'll get through the presentation in roughly 30 minutes, and we'll have an opportunity for you guys to ask some questions at the end. Uh, we ask if you have questions throughout the, pr the presentation, you should be able to see uh, a little chat option. Uh, if you type those questions in, I'll try to cover them. Uh, if they're tough for me to cover, uh, Ben will try to type and, and respond to some as we go as well. Um, so hopefully this takes about 30 minutes and we get most of your questions answered and make you feel a little more comfortable uh, so that Friday we can have an awesome and great event. Uh, it makes a pretty big impact. Uh, to start here, the agenda uh, for the call will just be kind of a quick synopsis of who we are. A lot of you are new to our community. Uh, we're excited about having you as a part of it, uh, but we also want to let you know a little bit about who we are. Uh, talk a little bit about things you should think about before the ride. Uh, most of what we're going to cover will be the event itself. Uh, hopefully answer any questions that you guys have there. And then, as I said, at the end, we'll have uh, some questions and answers. Uh, in between each of those uh, segments, we'll have a little pause uh, for uh, you know an impact slide or you know, read about some of the things we do in the community, but also give you an opportunity to type in some questions if you have them. So first, starting off with uh, about Bike to the Beach and what our goals are, uh, and then kind of what we try to do in each city that, that we operate in. Um, our mission, uh, the way that we kind of look at it, is to improve, inspire, fund, and shift, uh, you know, the national dialogue on autism. Um, you know, improving lives in, in really tangible ways with our local partners, um, inspiring individuals both on the spectrum and in the community to kind of, you know, push themselves to step outside of, of what might be comfortable and uh, engage further with their community and, and make an impact in their community. Uh, to fund, you know, the solutions that we think we see uh, and to really kind of shift a perspective uh, on autism to something that is kind of more proactively positive, um, that is showing a lot of accomplishment and showing a lot of potential uh, and showing what everybody's capable of if we just, you know, kind of get behind them and support them a little bit um, instead of, you know, sometimes focusing on, you know, some difficulties that individuals might have. Um, everything we do, we try to make challenging, fun, uh, and to make sure it's having an impact. Uh, where we are now, um, you know, we're trying to grow and making a more national impact across the country uh, to become the ride for autism. And we're hoping that we get to the point where we're raising over $2 million a year annually in a sustainable, um, efficient, and consistent manner. Um, as a lot of you guys, as a lot of you know, we started in DC. We were a small group of friends that wanted to, to try to do something great. Uh, and reached out to the people around us. And every year, the DC community, the Baltimore community, uh, Maryland in general, Virginia ha has answered that call. And we've grown from you know, a set of five friends to 20 friends to a couple hundred. To this year, we'll be really close to 600 riding. Uh, and we're hoping that you know, Friday is about a half a million dollar event, which we're pretty excited about. Each city, uh, starting with kind of DC, try to impact autism in a meaningful way by funding local organizations that have funding gaps um, in our community. We try to inspire individuals. We really try to educate all of our riders. We think we have a unique opportunity with people signing up to ride with us uh, well in advance to educate them about autism um, and then to empower everybody, to empower our riders, to empower individuals on the autism spectrum uh, to really kind of engage and, and take on new Uh, a lot of you guys have seen some of these, as I said, if you have any questions about um, that portion, feel free to kind of type them on in now. Um, if not, you give yourself a, a second to get a drink of water and you know, each slide here will spend about 30 seconds and we'll move on. Um, all right, before the ride, uh, communications and signups, GPS downloads, what to bring, and packet pickup. Uh, 
they are the larger kind of questions that we get. Um, for communications and signups, uh, especially this week, uh, make sure you're reading all the emails. We have a lot of great opportunities for you. We also have certain things that we need you to engage with, whether um, you know it, us and you know storage signups to kind of medical questions we might have. The more that you engage with those, the smoother the event will go for you, and the more that we'll be prepared to kind of really help you have the best day. Uh, if you haven't yet, join our DC Facebook group. There are a lot of people that ask great questions in there. A lot of times a question you have, somebody else has asked. Uh, it's a great way to be a good community member and answer other people's questions. It's where we'll post kind of a lot of small changes. Um, or if we're seeing a, you know, a number of emails come in about some one topic, we'll try to kind of put it out there in a more public way there um, along with the emails. For bus and storage, you can do it through your portal. Um, if you go into uh, the edit your info in your portal, you can still sign up for the bus or, or bike storage if you need it. Um, but please make sure that you sign up for all of those things sooner rather than later as space is limited on those options. And finally, uh, go into your portal. We have a lot of great information there. We have a lot of great resources there. If you spend 10 minutes clicking around, reading up on different things, uh, a lot of the questions that, that people have are, are answered through there and in the ride guide. Um, Strava and GPS. Um, 10 years ago when we started, this, this wasn't available. Um, now that it's here, I can't recommend it strongly enough for people to take the time to download the app. Um, one, it's great for groups. You know, we do have a lot of people that get out and train throughout the year together. But in this week, the most important thing is that it has the route on it. We'll have, you know, huge turn signs along the route. We have point-to-point -point queues, which we'll cover a little bit later. Um, but downloading Strava and your GPS before the ride day um, gives you a, a live um, GPS signal to, to make sure that you're on the route and cues you to make the right turns. The information you're seeing here is also in the ride guide. Um, so if, you know, you're feeling you know, under a little pressure to try to get it done while we're still looking at the slide. Um, don't need to feel that way. We have it in there. Um, you can also, as I said, you know, message a Facebook group or ask different questions if you are having any issues with it. Um, what to bring? Um, bring a water bottle, bring extra water bottle. Um, you know, have two. Um, have a rear red blinking light, front headlight, uh, a helmet, and at least one spare. You know, there are a lot of, we have uh, videos in our ride day email that show you how to change a tire. We'll have, you know, mechanics and chase car support throughout the ride. Um, we also recommend though that you go into the day knowing a little bit about how to change it, just because nobody wants to be waiting for uh, a tire to be changed. If you can at least get it started, a lot of times one of our mechanics will get there and they can do some of the hard parts for you or finish it for you. Um, but if you can get it going, it'll save you a couple minutes, you know, getting back on the road. What we recommend, um, bring us a, uh, a cell phone and a charging uh, cable. Um, hopefully you don't run out of you know, batteries on the day. If you have a, you know, a spare charge with you, it's great, uh, but always be prepared. Uh, we'll have some Ziplocs at the start, but always good to bring a Ziploc bag as you sweat. If we get a kind of passing shower, which we tend to get in the summer, uh, you wanna make sure that your cell phone and what you need is dry. Um, Cycling shoes, cycling shorts, gloves, socks, all those things are, are not in the required category, but they'll make your life uh, a ton better if you have them. So we highly recommend that you do that. Uh, keep identification on you at all times. Uh, keep a health insurance card on you uh, if you have one at all times. And bring some money or credit card. We do provide all the food, water, snacks, uh, that you could imagine. Uh, we do have certain rest stops that offer kind of unique food. One of our stops is at a Kiwanis uh, chicken stand, and you can get, you know, a pretty good half chicken for, you know, really cheap. Uh, and it's turned into kind of a fan favorite of a lot of our riders. So throughout the day, maybe things that you might want if, you know, you're a Powerade fan as opposed to a Moda Pure fan, if you're, you know, like a certain kind of thing that we do pass some stores that, that you may want to stop in. Um, if you need any medications, make sure that you bring them, uh, saddlebags with, you know, the tubes and things you need to repair. 
a uh, portable hand pump is always good to have. I ride with it even when I do our events. Um, as I said, I like to take care of my flats. You know, it's nice to have someone come and help me with the finish, not, um, you know, have to do the whole thing while I'm just waiting for them to get there. Um, sunglasses. It will be sunny for a large part of that day, uh, and it's a long day. So, um, you know, sunglasses is much for the wind. And then a bag for the beach. We'll cover a little bit more of uh, that in the event day, but we do take a bag to the finish line for you. Um, so pack a bag uh, with a towel, something else you might like. Um, pack and pick up. We get an emergency bracelet with my number and Ben's number and our medical coordinator's num number um, to wear on ride day. It's always great to have a quick reference. Case of emergency, um, always dial 911 first, uh, but then also notify us. We do have medical action plans in place. Uh, 911 will be your fastest emergency response. Uh, all the EMS along the route are notified. Um, but feel, please keep that if you get a flat if there are things we can help with um you know emergency coordination those things um you need our number for you'll get a jersey you'll get a bike number please make sure that you keep that bike number and that it goes on the bike that you are riding that day that is how we're going to track you throughout the day um that is how we know who you are um you know there is a bag check number on the sheet that you'll get put that on any bag that you'd like us to take to the beach for you that's how we know whose bag it is when you get to the finish line. We make sure that we're giving them back to the right people. Um, total cue sheet is now a digital download um, that you can get. Uh, we will be handing out Ziploc bags at the start and pack and pick up. We will give you ride safety tips, um, the ride they schedule, and how to change a flat tire. Um, so all things to keep in mind that you can expect to get at pack and pick up. Um, before we move into kind of event day, here's just another you know small example of kind of the impact that you guys are making. Um, you know, it's it's an incredible story. Um, a young girl with, with autism that that we've grown really close to over the last ten years, and watch her grow up. Uh, when we started this, she was, you know, five six years old, uh, and you know now she's grown into a teenager. Her older sister was going to prom, and you. Know, She's grown into communication skills and, you know, asked why she couldn't have a prom. Um, you know, and a lot of time I think we think of, you know, what can we mitigate and how can we kind of support? Um, we don't think about kind of how can we really make a life, you know, exciting and, and give kids something to look forward to. Um, and this prom that, you know, Ben and I go to every year is, you know, truly a unique opportunity to watch. Um, these kids really enjoy themselves um, and, you know, kind of really grow into social skills and, you know, in more formal settings that, you know, maybe a you know, standard academic curriculum might not teach. Um, the event. Uh, and this is where most of the questions probably will come. So, again, feel free to type them in or ask me, um, you know, at the end or on email. Um, First thing is the schedule. Um, Start line will open at four. You know, ride and safety briefing will start at 4.50. We do recommend that you get there early. Uh, please get there by 4.30. It'll take you a little while to check in. It'll take you a while to get situated. We always recommend that you check your tire pressure again that morning. Uh, check your tire pressure there. Go to the bathroom. Don't wait till five minutes before the ride starts to try to go to the bathroom. That's when a lot of people are going to try to go. The lines are going to get long. Um, so get there early, kind of situate yourself so that you're kind of ready to go, we always say, by 440. Um, imagine the ride would start at 440, 445, and that you would have everything taken care of by then. Uh, we'll push off right at 5, uh, you know, from both D.C. and Baltimore, um, and start that ride. It's big. They do start on time so that they can merge kind of appropriately. Um, We'll go over the Bay Bridge transfer in a little bit more detail, but that transfer will occur from 6 to 8 a.m. Um, you know, if you are falling behind that 8 a.m. pace, um, you know, we may have a sag wagon help you, uh, you know, catch back up to the ride there. It is important that we kind of stay on schedule as we get away from the cities uh, and that we use our trucks and buses to get people over. Um, the finish line will open, um, you know, just past 11. 
Uh, so if you are, you know, a super ultra fast rider and you get in there uh, right at 11 or before, uh, you know, the, the finish line, you know, may not be going full steam as we try to respect our volunteer time and kind of the, the expected time of, of most of our riders. And we've seen over the years that uh, that 11, 11, 15 is when we start to see our first drip of riders, with the core of our riders getting in between one and three. Um, you know, some get in around 1230. Uh, at 4.45, um, please come back for a group photo. Um, it's one of the highlights of our year. It's one of the highlights of our riders' years. Uh, one of our riders over the years has written, you know, a song about bike to the beach. He kind of plays it, um, you know, as we all sit at North Beach. Uh, and we're excited about having kind of a champagne toast uh, to celebrate our riders, to celebrate our community, to celebrate everybody. So if you do finish early and want to go take a shower, um, you know, you do – you want to drop your kids off, you know, at a hotel or the house, please come back. Um, please share that moment with us. Please share it with all the other riders. What you guys are doing this year is incredible. It's blowing us away. It's humbling. Um, it's so great when we get to share that with you guys. The day is busy. We get spread out. Um, having that moment is really important to us. Um, at 615, the finish line will close. That means that the bike racks and uh, the supervision um, won't be there anymore. So if you are taking your bike with you, you need to make sure that it's off the rack and accounted for at that time. Uh, we'll start loading the buses up at 6, you know, planning to push the buses off at 6.15 to go back to D.C. and Baltimore. Um, you know, guessing that that bus ride will take, you know, about three hours um, to get everybody back. Uh, we'll have trucks that accompany those buses that um, bring the bikes back for you as well. Um, starting line in DC is located at Gonzaga College High School, uh, right next to their football field. It'll be open from four to five. Uh, please, if you're getting dropped off, uh, get dropped off on H Street. Don't turn into the campus. If you're parking, you can park at Union Station with a voucher for a discounted parking rate that's only a block away. Um, when you get to check in, there are two options. If you have picked up your packet already, um, all you need to do, do is go through our speed check in, walk by, and tell the people that are checking you in your, num your rider number, and you are all set and accounted for for the day. If you have not picked up your packet, um, then you'll go in a different line for packet pickup. You know, you can grab your jersey, things that you need, uh, your emergency bracelet that morning. So there are two different lines. One, if you've already previously picked up your packet and have a number. The other is if you do not have a number or jersey and need to pick it up. Uh, we will have porta potties, you know, at the starting lines. Uh, as I mentioned, please get there early to use them. Um, you know, if you wait till right before the event start, the ride starts, um, it can get backed up there. Um, parking is at Union Station. For the bag drop, we will take what we consider, uh, you know, a carry-on bag, um, you know, for you to the finish line. Uh, you can pack some clothes in it, anything you need at the beach, a towel for the finish, things of that nature. If you're going down for a full week, uh, please don't bring kind of two huge check bags. Uh, but at the same time, realize that it can be more than a very small duffel. Um, you can pack enough clothing in there for the full weekend. Uh, with it. Mind you, use the bike pumps. Most flats that occur on our ride, uh, you know, occur within the first, you know, five to 10 miles. And that's because tires are underinflated, which is the number one cause of flats. Um, for our Baltimore start line, you know, it's at Francis Scott Key Elementary and Middle School. Start time is, you know, opens at four. The ride will start at five. Similar check-in where there'll be a speed and regular check-in. You may pick up your packet there. Um, our bathrooms. You can park on site at the school and leave your car. Um, so if you're worried about that, you don't need to find parking off site. Um, again, if you are um, getting dropped off, please don't turn into the parking lot as that's where um, things will be set up. Um, the Bay Bridge transfer. Uh, you know, we really pride ourselves on how efficient it is. Um, you know, our riders kind of always, uh, you know, speak about the machine that it is and, and how we try to do everything we can to get you over there and uh, minimize the time that you have to spend off of your bike. Whether you are going, taking a ride with us over the Bay Bridge or having your own ride meet you there, please check in. Uh, please check in with our volunteers so that I know that you have gotten to World War II 
and that you are in transportation to the other side of the bridge. Um, if you don't, you'll probably get a call from me an hour later um, trying to find you. Um, so make sure that you check in. If you are using us to get over the Bay Bridge, uh, you'll check in. You should get a rider number and, or excuse me, a truck number that you'll be assigned. Go over to that truck and look, hand your bike, hand your own bike to a volunteer, um, and he will store it in the truck and wrap it for you. Uh, after you hand him your, your bike, you can go get food, get water, talk to friends, uh, you know, wait for other individuals to get there, uh, and keep a, an ear open for us to call out your bus. So if you're on truck three, uh, we'll probably tell you that you're also on bus three. Once truck three is fully loaded with all the bikes, we'll call out uh, for everybody that is on bus three uh, to come to load. You know, come load the bus. We'll get you that ride over the Bay Bridge. When you get to the far side of the bridge, you'll hop off your bike. We'll have our volunteers there unloading the bikes off the truck. As they uh, you know, pull them out, they'll call out the rider number. If you step forward, they'll hand it down to you and you can get right back on that road. Uh, at the Bay Bridge transfer, we try to uh, wrap every other bike in a moving blanket uh, to minimize kind of any scratching or, or wear and tear uh, of the bikes being kind of in close proximity to each other. If you're with the, pet, the, the heart of the ride, um, those trucks and those buses fill up really quick. Um, you'll typically, from pulling in to, on your bike to pulling out on the truck, uh, it'll be less than 15 minutes. If you are in the tail end of the ride, as we're waiting for the last you know, 20, 10, you know, five riders, we need to wait with that last bus till all of those riders get in. So that wait time can you know, start to expand out a little bit. The same thing happens on the front end, not quite as drastically, um, but if you're the first rider in and you really uh, crush the time, we you know, have a pretty solid rider base, so that first bus should fill up pretty quickly, um, but also just be aware that you know, if you are the fastest biker, uh, we do have to wait for the truck and the bus to be full to, to send you guys over. Um, again, middle of the pack, it's about a 35 minute bus ride, 15 minutes loading and about 10 minutes unloading. Uh, if you are in that last group, that, that time that you are waiting to load your bus uh, can extend out a little bit. So just something to be aware of. Um, throughout the ride, uh, you'll see these in the back. These are our turn signs. We have straight signs, um, you know, arrows pointing right or left, follow them at, you know, as is appropriate. Uh, we have food at all of them. So we have, you know, energy materials like you know, power, cliff bars, uh, power blasts, uh, power gels. We'll ha normally have some salty and some sweet snacks like chewy bars, uh, goldfish, Cheez-Its, a, a variety of tastes throughout the day. And at a few signature stops, we'll also have more substantial food, whether it's bagels, pizza, uh, things of that nature, the, the Kalani's chicken stuff as well. We do have sunblock. Make sure that you're applying it throughout the day. Uh, body wipes, you know, if you want to wipe yourself off real quick. We have cue cards at each stop, which are just the directions from that stop to the next stop. So at every stop, we recommend that you grab a cue card to get you to the next stop. So as far as directions go, you should have the turn signs um, at every turn throughout the route. You should have cue cards that give you just the directions to the next stop. And then you'll also have your Strava if you download that in advance. We normally say that if you're, you know, using two out of those three, um, you're going to be really comfortable and confident throughout the ride. If you're just doing turn signs, you always kind of have a fear that you're missing one. If you're just doing a cue card, you kind of have a little fear. Uh, if you're just used to Strava, um, you never know with the battery on your phone. So we recommend that you get comfortable using two. Um, and if you do that, you'll have a really confident, um, you know, an efficient ride. Uh, we have bike pumps if you need to get a little bit of a boost. And we do have first aid um, kits throughout, medical personnel space throughout the ride. Um, you know, if you need any greater attention in that way. Um, nutrition tips. Um, eat consistently um, throughout the day. Don't wait till you're hungry to start eating. Um, and don't eat everything you can eat when you're hungry. Uh, having small foods and a variety of items, whether it's a piece of fruit at one stop, then a salty snack at the next, a cliff bar, you know, at one a gel and a chew, uh, you know, as you start to get tired and maybe need a little bit of a boost. And as I mentioned, we do have pizza and bagels um, that are a little bit more substantial. 
those small portions um, consistently throughout the day. The same thing applies for water. Um, drink consistently. You want to have about one bottle of stop. So you shouldn't be going through three, four, five bottles of stop. Um, but also don't always wait till you're thirsty. Make sure you fill up your bottle um, so you can drink as you're riding and have something there. We do have motive pure throughout the day. Um, you know, it is our preferred, uh, you know, electrolyte enhancement beverage. Um, they're our partner because we really believe in their product. Um, you know, we found when we cycle with people we've talked to, um, it doesn't have any of the sugar in it, doesn't have any of the additives, doesn't have, you know, a lot of those things that weigh you down or make a, a beverage thick, uh, but still gives you the electrolytes and the potassium that you need um, to kind of help you, you know, recover and, and stay fresh throughout the day. So do, you know, mix in Motive Pure with your water um, as you go through the event. The finish line. Um, we have an exciting finish line in DC. It's at the Lions Club in Dewey Beach and North Beach Restaurant Bar and Grill. Make sure that you check in when you arrive. Um, if you've hit that $500 uh, minimum, you'll get uh, a pair of sunglasses. There are bike racks there for you to put your bikes on. As I said, the bike racks close at 6.15. There will be special bike racks assigned for people taking the bus ride home. Uh, there'll be special bike racks assigned to people that are putting their bikes in storage with us. Um, and there are special bike racks assigned to people that um, are going to be responsible for their bike and taking it with them after the event. Please do your best to place your bike on the appropriate rack. Um, at Packet Pickup, you should also get um, you know, some stickers for your bike label that help us identify to make sure that we have all the bikes going where they need to go. Um, food and drinks, uh, we will have water kind of at the finish line to help you rehydrate. North Beach Restaurant Bar and Grill is uh, gracious enough to be putting on a barbecue for us. Uh, I believe that's from about 12.30 to 5.30. Um, so there should be some food and, and drinks available over there. We do have showers at the finish line. Um, they are uh, most likely uh, you know, compared to uh, boardwalk showers. So they provide little shower, little privacy. Um, they're not you know, super temperature controlled. They're meant to be a quick rinse off and towel off, um, you know, get some of the sweat off of you, dry yourself off with a towel um, and change it in the bathroom. They're not kind of a full scrub herbal essence uh, experience. Uh, so I want to give people a heads up that there is a great opportunity there to, to feel clean again. Um, but there are also a lot of people that typically want to use the showers. So uh, we ask that you know, it's a quick rinse and, and, and get out. Um, the bus home, uh, they are coach buses going back to both D.C. and Baltimore. Uh, again, try to go to the bathroom before you get on that bus. Um, you know, I believe the D.C. bus is a 52 passenger and may have uh, a bathroom on it. Um, the Baltimore bus is a 32 passenger. And I believe it, I do not believe it has a bathroom on it. We will probably schedule a stop um, on the way home in case people need to, to use the restroom. Parking is very limited at the finish line because we do have you know 600 bikes uh, that are trying to to be parked there, um, and we also have emergency you know vehicles, trucks, uh, a number of other things in the area. Uh, you know, just down the street at Rusty Rudder, there's some public parking along the streets. You can get public parking passes um, you know, at the police station. So if you do have uh, loved ones coming, friends, family, uh, we recommend that, you know, they try to carpool. So one, you're not bringing a lot of cars. Um, and two, um, that they are, are ready to, you know, get there a little bit in advance. So they have, you know, 15 minutes to walk over. Um, bike storage, we do take bikes back to Washington, D.C., and we will hold them for you um, until Tuesday and Wednesday of the next week. Um, whatever bag you dropped at the starting line, uh, we will have you at the finish line to collect. Uh, and as I mentioned, please, please, please come back for that group photo, uh, champagne toast, uh, to do some quick awards and uh, hear that Bike to the Beach song, which is always a highlight uh, for Bennett and I. Um, the support that you'll see throughout the day, we have uh, rest stops, ride marshals, cars, mechanics, EMS, and police, um, kind of all on duty. For mechanics, 
you know, if you get something like a flat tire, they're typically there in a couple minutes and they'll do it right on site. If it's a mid complexity, something broke, a spoke, things of that nature, we'll probably try to get you out of the sun a little bit, shuttle you to the nearest rest stop uh, while they can work on it. If it's a major issue, um, you know, where, where your bike has a failure, a lot of times we'll see if we have, you know, an available bike, um, you know, that we could swap out for you. Uh, or if we can swap out a part, uh, not always a guarantee, you know, that does come down to, um, you know, what we have available. Um, but again, it will be done generally at a rest stop. For EMS, uh, we do have our own EMS unit, um, you know, throughout the event, you know, that is, can be called in for consultations on things. And if you have issues and concerns, uh, it's always great to have them take a look at it. You know, it's always good to, to get those questions answered. Uh, at the same time, if you are in an emergency situation, please always call 911 first uh, and then follow up uh, and we'll coordinate our EMS team you know, with the local jurisdiction's EMS team. If it's basic first aid, you know, most of our chase cars and all of our rest stops have first aid equipment with them. Um, police, uh, we do have police support uh, you know, at major intersections throughout the event uh, and as awareness of you know, vehicles on shoulders with lights going and different things. Um, you know, both in DC and Baltimore, uh, we do have uh, police support scheduled. Uh, we also realize and are very considerate that they are two major cities uh, and that those units sometimes need to respond to things in the area, um, you know, and different city needs, uh, you know, throughout our event. So, you know, you will typically see them at major intersections. Uh, you know, they're not always there for the entire event or duration, um, but they are supporting us with awareness. Um, and with their availability as we go through the day. Um, one of the really cool things about our event, um, you know, is not only are we kind of donating to, to fund organizations, we also, you know, kind of practice what we preach. And, you know, we do look for, you know, employment opportunities and to use vendors that employ people on the autism spectrum. Um, every t-shirt, frisbee, um, that you guys receive throughout the event. Uh, most of what you get through our online store um, is all printed and made by uh, Spectrum Designs. Um, over 80% of their workforce um, is on the Spectrum uh, and they do incredible work um, and they're an incredible company. Uh, if any of you ever have the needs to get t-shirts printed for any event, uh, any small kind of promotional item, uh, please look them up. They do a great job and, and what they've done with employment is pretty remarkable. Um, as I mentioned, uh, important numbers, uh, you'll see I'm Robbie, uh, the event director, that's my number there. Um, ben is, um, you know, incredible ride day. It seems like he's in a billion places at once. Uh, grab his number if you get a flat, if you need some help. Um, you know, he's always there to support. And then Ray McQu McQuill is our medical lead. Um, for most medical issues, if it's an emergency, again, you know, 911. If it's coordination, uh, please give me a call first. Um, you know, if it's, you know, things in the middle and you need consultation, um, you know, please feel free to call Ray as well. They're a great team. They, they come down and do all of our events up and down the East Coast for us. Um, last slide I always kind of show is, is this slide. Um, you know, it, it just always reminds me why we're doing what we're doing and kind of the impact that we're trying to make. Realizing um, that we're impacting partners to enable them to do what they do well. Um, you know, and we're, we're ultimately doing it for parents and, and families, uh, you know, and all the individuals that are, um, you know, touched by autism. It's, it's pretty incredible the impact that you all step up and make every year and, and it blows us away.